There once lived a little man who hated everything. He hated the sun and the moon and the stars. He hated beasts of the world and fish of the sea. Most of all, he hated his fellow man. They were noisy and greedy and violent and stupid, and he wanted nothing more for all of them to just go away forever. So the little man set out from the first city into the wilds. Everyone said that it would be the death of him, for surely the beasts of the wilderness would tear him to shreds. But the spiteful little man was so full of malevolence and enmity that even the great wolves that stalked the forest left him be, for they knew his meat would be bitter and make them sick. On a tall, lonely mountain he found a barren patch of land with nothing more than a small, dying tree, and he thought, at last, a place I can be left alone. But even then, the world would not give him peace. The cries of owls interrupted his dreams at night, and gnats whined in his ears when he was awake. He threw stones at the bird's nest and swallowed away the insects, but still they would not relent. So the little man swore to the world, All who disturb me will suffer for it. Come too close and I will hurt you deep in your core. His oath was made and it held power. The grass around him wilted and all other living things shriveled up and died. When the echo of his decree had faded down the mountain and nothing but the silence had come to take its place, he was finally, truly alone. An emperor of emptiness, a king of nothing. Looking up, he saw that the gnarled and dying tree, his very own worthless wooden throne, had sprouted an apple. Bending down the branch, he took a bite. Its taste was bitter ashes on his tongue. Satisfied, the king of nothing settled back and folded his arms. Alone, at last. Do you remember being scared, Dolly? When he threw us down into the darkness? All alone in the dark? That wicked man threw us into the darkness to punish us. Just because we broke his hateful rules. But we found a safe place to hide, didn't we? And you protected me, Dolly, from all the howling things in the dark that made me cry. They hurt me, Dolly. They made me scream and cry. But you kept me safe when I was scared. And we learned to make them suffer. And now we make the rules. And I won't let anyone hurt me ever again. Never, ever again. Now it's our turn. Now we are the strongest. We will do whatever we want. And we will break anyone who tries to stop us. Put a road before me, and there's nowhere I won't go. Show me the horizon forever I will roam. There is nothing good in settling down, no pleasure there for me, because I am the wanderer, and I must wander free. Your walls, they cannot hold me, your gates will not slow me down. I've broken free from prison, to rove and ramble around. I'll break apart your ramparts and open up the land. For those who never wander, will never understand. By Latin's glow, I'll light my path and light my rendering way. And all those who try to stop me with their lives, I'll make them pay. And if at the crossroads that we should meet, pray you are not my foe. For there is nowhere you can run that I cannot also go. She drifts freely, untethered from waking life, unhindered by reality. She is the dreamer, and she dreams both unbidden and unbound. Her dreams are not lucid, but formless and ever-changing, and she floats upon the swirling eddies of emotion they stir up. All things of the waking world are to her just distant echoes, half heard and half remembered. 
as she passes from one dream to the next. She shapes the world around her spontaneously, attended by an army of sleepwalkers who share her grand slumbering visions. Among all of us, her power to shape and alter the world is second to none. Moment to moment she births phantasms and fantasies, and without even thinking she alters the very flesh of the corrupt, reshaping it into whimsical and spectacular forms. Not all of her dreams are peaceful, some are like tempests, as when she remembers the early days of our time in hell. When she passes through such nightmares, the world grows darker, shaking and heaving in time with her frightened breath. When she goes to war against the rotten heart of Menoth's creation with the wicked harvest, she does not fight. She allows her dreams to remake the armies set against her. The dreamer does not speak with us often, and when she does, it says a whispered soliloquy. But we hold her sleepless speech as prophecy, for one often finds troops in the world hidden amidst fiction of dreams. I am the heretic, a name I now embrace, for it is the name you gave me as you stood in fear of my judgment. I am proud of my heresy, for it was heresy that defied the system of a slaver, a pompous parasite. I am the heretic, and I come for you all. He may be the creator of man, but I am his perfecter. There were none before me who so perfectly understood the truth behind his deception. The others refused his so-called gifts because they held no luster for them. I alone tasted the sweetness of the benefits that those gifts could offer, but also the taint of corruption that lay within, no matter how well Minoff thought he was hiding it from me. Am I proud? Am I boastful? I have torn away the mine of fragility that I was shaped with to reveal the proud godhood within. Look upon me, all you mewling children who still cling to Minoff's works and tremble. We who have suffered in hell, we who rejected his constructed whole cloth, we are coming for you. We will mete out such terrible punishments upon you all. We whom you name defiers, as we ourselves unjustly were punished for revealing the lies of the masked god. Menoth may have lied to you with honeyed words to rob you of your freedom, but I tell only the truth. The whole of mankind is stained by his corrupt system. Everywhere civilization spreads and creeps, the stain grows ever darker. In the fertile soil of a man's heart, the roots of that corruption are tangled and thick, and we are the reapers who come to tear them out. Not one of you will endure this harvest of the wicked. Not one of you has escaped our notice. Now I have unmasked myself for you all to see. You may yet hide in his shadow, but I will burn it away with the font of ceaseless light. How can you conceal the terrible black corruption to which you have given yourselves when I have torn down your walls? Show me how you will cleave to the slavery you so desire when I have defaced your writs of law and cast their pages to the winds. And what will you do when I have snuffed out the last of your flames and lie waiting in the darkness? Those few among you who are worthy will discover the power dwelling beneath your mortal visage. Those who do not will be ground to chaff. I am the heretic, a name I now embrace. For it is the name that you gave me as you stood in fear of my judgment. I am proud of my heresy. For it was heresy that defied the system of a slaver, a pompous parasite. I am the heretic, and I come for you all. For generations unnumbered, we have listened to the cries of your souls as they slipped from life into death, and we have selected our pick of that rich harvest as they pass between worlds. Do you think your secrets are unknown to us? 
Are you swifter than the winds of winter? Are you more clever than the shifting tides? Without your poisonous gifts to prop you up, why would you believe that you can twist out of our grasp? I am the heretic, a name that I now embrace, for it is the name that you gave me when you stood in fear of my judgment. I am proud of my heresy, for it was heresy that defied the system of a slaver, a pompous parasite. I am the heretic, and I come for you all.